Good morning and welcome to Corpus Christi Catholic Church here in Tahoe City, California. Today, with great joy, we begin a new liturgical year as we celebrate the first Sunday in Advent 2021. We also keep in our hearts and minds during our Masses this weekend, all of our parishioners, uh, Deidre Carson and Patricia McNowan. We now enter into the Sacred Mysteries as we sing... O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here. Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O And we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to enter into these saving mysteries on this first Sunday of Advent, let us first call to mind our sinfulness, our brokenness, and then with confidence in God's great love for us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to your friendship. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be attentive. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean men. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Verum Domini Deo gratias 
Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you, and let us see your face. And we shall be saved. And we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim. Shine forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, let us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, Lord make us turn to you. you. Let us see your face, and, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Verbum Domini, Deo <clears throat> Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or a cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be alert. Be watchful. That's the basic message of the first week of Advent. <clears throat> but I'd like to refract that message through something a little more practical that we all probably experience. Um, you know, we are blessed by the relationships that God puts in our life. And yet sometimes there can be discord. There can be division. We can have differences of opinion. And then sometimes we can actually have just an all out falling out with people that we just, you know, maybe they're family members, they're people we work with, people in our church, and it cause it leads to a lot of bitterness and in some really ugly, ugly feelings. And I got to tell you, the people in my life that I think have always registered, made a deep impression upon me, are the people that practice, and this might be a strange word for some of you, benignity, benignity. Somebody who is able to rise above some of the dif difficulties, divisions, bitternesses, you know, 
uh, and, and kind of wrench through uh, bitterness and unforgiveness and still remain uh, available for a relationship and reconciliation. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I saying that? Well, in many ways, our readings kind of talk about that in the regard that God is standing ready and willing and waiting to welcome us back. That's what it's all about. God longs for us, hopefully, to come to our senses and realize that maybe we were rash, maybe we were wrong. You know, a lot of times people will ask me as a priest or it was a, just my, my, buddy, my friends, you know, well, you're supposed to be in the religion business, quote unquote. And, you know, how do people find God? Well, to be honest with you, I think it's usually through that doorway of humility. Um, you know, many of the greatest saints, St. Saint Francis, St. Therese of Lisieux, um, you know, uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe, uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, perhaps, um, you know, uh, all these saints practiced genuine humility. And it's interesting because the world, because when people are very filled with a lot of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness, you know, they attack anybody and everybody and anything. Because why? They're wounded. They're like wounded animals. But the thing is that once, you know, God sometimes, when we least expect it, he blesses us with his grace to see where we were wrong. And let me tell you, friends, even though it might be disconcerting, you know, there are a lot of people that do pride themselves on being right about everything. Well, that's impossible. None of us can be right about everything. But when we have a relationship and we know that maybe deep down inside, we had a part to play in that. And you begin to own that. You begin to say, well, you know, my side of the street isn't that clean either. And when you, you know, God gives us this enlightenment. That's what Advent's about. You know, we celebrate with the Advent wreath. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the, the wreath is, you know, lit one candle every week. But eventually it grows in its intensity of enlightenment. And that's what we're called to do in the Christian life is to allow that enlightenment to help us to see where we're wrong. You know, a lot of times people like to point the finger of other people and say, well, this is where you're wrong. You know, well, that's, that's fine. And it's okay to have uh, legitimate disagreements and, 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 and uh, opinions and to point out people, you know, say, well, actually, I think this is wrong, whatever. That's all fine and good. But when it leads us to, to, to being angry with people and bitter with people and hateful, well, that's when we're wrong. And so this, wonder, this first week of Advent is a beautiful invitation. It's like, you know, if I just recognize my part in this, I realize where I'm wrong. And the beautiful thing is that you know now, especially in Advent, that God is welcoming us. He's waiting for us to just come home. It's not about right or wrong in the end. It's about that, that, uh, that, that avenue, that, that thoroughfare that God opens up for us to return to him. And I think that that's really the message of Advent. Yes, we hear Jesus saying, be awake. Basically, being awake to the reality of our part in the problem. The age-old problem is that because of our sinfulness, our selfishness, our self-centeredness, our egos, you know, we have fallen away from God. We have turned our backs on God. We've wandered away. We're in the wilderness. And yet God, you know, is sort of like a beautiful, you know, winter night. You look up and you see the beautiful full moon. And you go, wow, it takes your breath away. And it, you, you kind of realize that there's, now I have something to guide me back to where I need to be. So allow the beauty of, of this wonderful Advent season to, to lead us back. Help us to enlighten our hearts and our minds to say, Lord, I'm wrong. It's the hardest words that I think of the word, I was, was wrong. Hardest words to say, but they're the most beautiful words to say because then you do what? You tear down that wall of enmity between you and maybe another, and most importantly, between God who waits for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> we together now stand as we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, with confidence, let us turn to our God who invites us to bring all of our cares before him. We pray for our church. We pray for our Pope and our Bishop. We pray that God would continue to pour out his holy grace upon his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all those who are um, suffering from the effects of the coronavirus. And we also pray for their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us also pray for uh, an end to the bitterness and anger and hatred in our world today that the grace of the Lord would begin to heal and bind up those wounded by division. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also remember our departed loved ones. We pray uh, during this new year of grace that they would be embraced in their new heavenly homeland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we thank you this morning for hearing all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We make them now with confidence in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Through the mystery of this water, I mean, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine which we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. <clears throat> and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, <clears throat> these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, and our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope, 
And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, as we acclaim, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jaime Soto, our Bishop, all the clergy and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them now into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse most chaste, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, in Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. 
Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Ecce on you stay, ecce qui tole peccata mundi. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Domine non sum dinius, ut interest of tectum meum, sit tantum big verbo, et si nabitur anima mea. Together now, let us stand and pray. <clears throat> May these holy mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what truly endures we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless each of you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Oh, come oh, thou wisdom from, from on high. Orderest all things mightily to watch the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go. 
rejoice, rejoice.